what if we don't have a simple pendulum? What if we have something called a physical pendulum? That is something that's swinging back and forth, woo, 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 like that, but I can't just say as I did it for a simple pendulum that all the mass was just in the bob and that there was some distance L and that string or whatever had no mass, we just kind of ignored it. So this is a chicken leg, it's like a drumstick, yeah, nailed here and it's allowed to swing back and forth. Um, if you think about it, really this pivot point, you could say it's a distance h from the center of mass of this drumstick. Um, and we usually just consider all of the mass to be at the center of mass. So this is really the same as a simple pendulum. Okay, we dealt with all the mass here at a length L from the pivot, except for, and now we're dealing with all the mass right here at a length H from the pivot. So really, I should get, if I did all the math again, I should get the same equation for period that I did um, for a simple pendulum. That is, come on, right here, the 2 pi square root of I mgl, except for instead of l, I'm going to use h. And it is. The period of a simple pendulum is basically 2 pi times the square root of moment of inertia over mg, but instead of l, where l was the distance from the mass to the pivot, it, we're using h, where h is the distance from the mass, center of mass to the pivot. h. Okay. And i, this time, is not for a point, so we, we did this point thing over here and put it in there to simplify it, we just don't do it that this time. We just leave it alone. And and that's it. The period of a physical pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of the moment of inertia of the physical pendulum divided by the mass times gravity times mass times, I'm oh, sorry, mass of the physical pendulum, and I should do that. This whole thing is up of mass m. Just do the whole thing. whole thing is mass m. Um, G, you know, G, and H is how far you put the pivot from the center of mass. Now, there are some cool things we can do with this. For instance, if we know I and we know H, we could time period and work backwards to find G. And in fact, they do this if they want to measure what G is at specific locations, because it does vary from place to place on the Earth depending on where you are and how high you are and all like, what latitude you're at and all kinds of stuff. Whoa, pairing plane coming. Sorry, I just paused for a second because there's a jet that made my car alarm go off and everything. Crazy jet. Okay. Um, all right, let's give an example. So, example. What if I had, a, not a drumstick weird thing, but a, like a stick, like a meter stick or something. Well, let's not say meter stick. A nice uniform rod. Okay, so a nice uniform rod of length L and I stuck a pivot through one end over here, okay, and I let it swing back and forth, and I timed its period. What could I do with that? Well, I know that for a uniform rod, the moment of inertia about its center of mass is generally one, oh, here it comes back. Okay, sorry. Generally, one twelfth m l squared. Okay, but I'm not in the center of mass. Am I? The center of mass is like right here, right in the middle. So the center of mass is a distance h away, or that h is half of an l. This distance is half an l. Okay. Now from the um, parallel axis theorem, I know that the, the moment of inertia of whatever is equal to the moment of inertia through the center of mass plus the mass of the thing times how far you are from the pivot squared, or how far the pivot is from the center of mass squared. Okay, so in this case, ICOM was 1 12th m L squared plus M. H is half of the stick, so that's L over 2 squared. 
And what I get is that I is, let's see, oh, sorry, not 1 half, 1 12th. That was weird. Um, 1 12th ml squared plus, let's see, I'm going to get ml squared here. My pen's having problems. I'm going to get ml squared, and then, but I've got it over 2, and the 2 is going to be squared, so it's going to end up being 1 fourth. If I do some, you know, common denominator stuff, what I end up with is that I is 1 third ml squared. Okay? So that means if I put that over into here, okay, I get that period is 2 pi, ah, stupid plane. Eh. Okay, one third ml squared all over mg, and now h again h is l over two, mm -hmm, like that. Okay, do some canceling, and now I've got t equals two pi. Let's see, the m's are gone. That three's on the bottom now. Ugh, wait, oh yucky. Okay, that two is like being on top. Ugh. Hang on, I have to think, okay, that two is like being on top, so I get a two up there. That one of the L's canceled. That three is like being on the bottom. I think that's right. I hope so. We will see. Okay. Um, I want G, so I'm going to square everything. Square everything. And then that means all this goes away. So I've got this. Okay, okay. All right, um, let's see. I got to get the g on top, so I'm going to multiply everything by g and then divide by t squared. So I end up with g equals. Merp, merp. Let's see, I'm going to pull that 2 out to the front. 2 times 4 is 8. I've got a pi squared. I've still got an l. Yep. And then on the bottom, I've got that 3. I've got that, um, let's see, that t squared. I, when I, I multiply it by g to get it over there, then I had to divide by t squared to get rid of it. OK. Um, oh, that's it. Yeah, that's everything. OK. So if I were to take um, some nice solid rod, like a meter stick or, I don't know, something, and, and set it up like this, and then I just need to pull it up there and let it swing, measure the period, put the period in right here. I know the length of the rod. I mean, it's I can just measure it. All of these are constants. I should be able to get G.